The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom Season 1, Episode 3 is now out. We're going to take a look at each of the storylines from it and give you a couple of takeaways. Pick a favorite animal from the episode, and we want to hear from you as well. Welcome back to Eye to Eye, Disney Through Our Eyes. My name is Kyle, and this is our Disney Variety Channel where we cover anything and everything Disney. If you haven't already, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss a chance to check out one of our videos. With episode three now in the books, the thing that I am loving about this series is that they're not just spending time focusing on the charismatic species that we think of in traditional zoos and aquariums. I'm talking lions, tigers, elephants, bears, oh my, everything that makes you say that, but they're giving a little bit of extra time to some of those things that people sometimes pass by, even in a Disney park, and deserve our attention. Episode three is called Betty and the Beast. So that is going to be about your featured animal, which we'll be talking about in just a second here. But something's a little interesting about this particular episode of the Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom is that there are three segments or three storylines that we fall in that because traditionally there's been four in the past and we only get three this time with a little bit of a, I'll call it a mini segment where they kind of tried to fill some time. So I'm interested as to why they actually did it, but it doesn't take anything away from the episode because I still really really enjoyed this episode so let's not waste any more time and get right into our first storyline of the three that we have for episode three storyline number one Hartman's Mountain Zebra Domino and Prima while not the episode's title storyline a large portion of the episode is dedicated to our striped friends these are the first of this species of zebra to inhabit Kilimanjaro safaris at Disney's Animal Kingdom introducing an animal to a new habitat is hard enough Throw in an already mixed species established herd, and this gets a bit more challenging. If that's not enough for you, let's throw in a newborn zebra in the mix as well. Their story is a great example of the challenges of how zookeepers have to account for so much in the introductions of animals into their new homes. Storyline number two, the Babarusa, Betty, and Mentari. One of the oddest looking animals in the world is a member of the pig family. Introducing animals to live together is one thing, but when the purpose for this is breeding, many more factors have to be carefully analyzed. Betty and Mentari go through a long but steady process to get to know each other from a distance. All that prolonged and cautious distance dating pays off as they hit it off from the start of their full introduction. Animal Kingdom is now able to celebrate their first birth in this animal species in the park's history with a brand new piglet. This segment highlights the efforts that go into making the next generation of animals become a reality. Storyline number three, the West Indian manatee, Lou. It's difficult not to love a manatee, but it is odd to think that these creatures were once mistaken as mermaids. The Seas Pavilion is home to the lovable big male named Lou. His story is one of tragedy turned success as he's brought to Disney after he was struck by a boat in the wild. His partially severed tail became infected during this time here, and it's like time to get a closer look at it. The trouble is you have to get an aquatic animal from Epcot to Animal Kingdom to the vet offices. The process is about as cumbersome as you can imagine, even more so when you try to fit this big guy into the equipment that's not necessarily made for him. Zoos often have plans A, B, and C for how things should go, but often it's plan Z that ends up being the one that works. So now let's talk about my takeaways from this episode, and I've got three of them for you to go with the three storylines. My first one has to do with that big lovable guy, Lou, from Epcot's The Seas Pavilion. Now, I have a soft spot for manatees because, I mean, just look at them, they're just like little balls of just jolliness, I feel like. They just, they seem like they have smiles on their face, and so it's really nice to actually go inside and look a little bit into what they have to do to actually care for this animal. And like we talked about, in the actual analysis of the storyline, he's had a very kind of tough time bouncing back from that injury he had. And so when, when it comes to trying to maintain and make sure that it still continues to heal properly, doesn't have any issues, you wonder how do they actually care for an animal in an aquatic environment? I didn't realize they actually had to use a crane to get out of the actual building that he's in to get him over to the Animal Kingdom vet offices. So I just felt like that was a really cool insight 
into what they actually do. Even someone with zookeeping experience, I didn't really anticipate exactly how they were going to pull all that off. So I, I think you at home can really appreciate the aspect that was there as well. Takeaway number two was actually about the storyline that was missing from this episode. Normally we get four, this time we only get three, but there was like this little, I'll call it a mini segment that had not only Joe Rohde, the brains and the, the whole creative process leadership idea behind Animal Kingdom there in it, but it gave us a perspective of what it actually takes to open up the actual Kilimanjaro Safari ride. We go with a cast member and go to the parking lot where I did realize that's where they stored all of the uh, different trucks that you ride in. And you get to see that she gets to ride through and kind of analyze is everything ready to go to begin the show for the day. And that's what they call it, you're on show. So that was just another unique perspective, even though they only spent like, what, two or three minutes on it with Joe Rohde and then the cast member. Even though we were lacking that other storyline, it was just another unique perspective that we don't normally get to see and I think that you'll really enjoy. Takeaway number three for me would be about the Babarusa. They're just cool looking animals. I remember the first time I saw a Babarusa in a zoo and I was like, what happened to the warthog with the tusks actually coming up out of the snout? One of the more unique and interesting looking animals in all of the world and especially at Animal Kingdom. And a lot of people blow past them over there in the oasis as you're entering Animal Kingdom to get to all of the main attractions. My advice to you is to check this segment out because I think it'll force you to actually stop and take a look at the Babarusas, especially now that you know their love story that they had going on between the two of them and eventually the baby piglet that came along with it as well. So I'm really glad that they chose to have a storyline completely dedicated to the very interesting Babarusa. So for my favorite animal from this episode, I gotta go with Big Lou the manatee. I mean, when you really watch that segment, it really gives you a great appreciation for in the zookeeping industry, how sometimes really you can plan for things, but it just doesn't work out. I mean, from lifting him out of his habitat in a crane, transporting him to Animal Kingdom, trying to get him up on a hydraulic lift, and then the CT scan won't fit, then the next one won't work, and then you have to move him outside and start bringing him out of anesthesia. I mean, literally, they were at plan Z by the time they were at the end of this whole process of trying to check out his former injury and see how it was going. So if you really want a great insight into what dealing with animals is all about, you can have a plan it just never works out. So that's why Lou and his story was my favorite one from this episode. Now this is where you come in. I wanna hear from you in the comment section below. What was your favorite storyline or animal from this particular episode of The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom? And as always, remember, I do have some zookeeping experience. I don't know everything, but I do know some things and I might be able to answer some of the questions or comments that you might have. So feel free to share those down in the comments section below. As always, we'd love to give you some opportunities to check out some more related content on our channel. So if you want to check out some of those things, they'll be in the description below, or you can click on the link above. Those will be some Disney's Animal Kingdom general videos, but also related back to the series that we've been reviewing this whole time. That's all I have for you in this edition of I2I, but until we assemble again, may the force be with you, and I'll see you real soon.